So we we'll turn our attention to KID and the first stretcher point that we can pick up is that this is all just one stanza all the way through. Um, it kind of shows that this poem may be quite reactionary. It's not really thoroughly thought out. It's maybe just something he's yelling at the time, you know, to this Batman big shot. Maybe the person's just, uh, you know, asked him to do one more thing and he's just kind of snapped and just, you know, said all this to him and uh, probably to run away and never return. Uh, you've got colloquial terms such as uh, ditched me, which, uh, and obviously you've got a lot of um, kind of informal like uh, speech in here uh, with a lot of phrases. Obviously, part of it is homage to like the, the, that way of talking in the '60s or things that were actually said in the in the uh, in the '60s TV show. Um, but then part of it is also just kind of like um, in reference to just being informal, like you know, someone actually standing up for themselves and not trying to be formal and eloquent, like you know, not like resigning from a job with a letter. This person is just kind of like saying it how it is to them. And also, you've got the uh, the informal tone, uh, which actually shows that the the writer and the per, sorry the person speaking and the person speaking to obviously have a uh, close relationship which is again emphasized by the fact that they've share these um, uh, unique group of termings from the 60s TV show um, but don't think it's just obviously about Batman and kid at all because the meaning really is about relations and relationships and how they change over time so just in some way this kid uh, Robin uh, in this case has actually just outgrown Batman um, uh, so it's actually things have just actually changed over time and he says that by I'm not playing ball boy any longer obviously ball boy in tennis and in uh, football where people would go and get the ball and then um, you know normally one of the perks of that was actually you get to see your stars the people that you actually like like up close and personal you know and you're helping them in some way even though it's a small way etc and just the word boy obviously there is another word for kid which is the name of the poem and again this kind of eyes he, he feels he's really grown out of this so again it's about that change it's also about who we admire and things that we actually look up to when we were a kid I mean maybe there were um, some instances here where obviously he said he was he, he was like a father to me he was like a little elder brother and it was uh, someone that he really actually looked up to so it gets us thinking about that and obviously it's about our role models in our in our lives maybe celebrities imagined a real dead uh, or whatever our admirations come from and also it becomes about the the truth uh, it's also about the uh, the point where the truth actually becomes uh, um, too hard to bear or some kind of truth that uh, about someone we care about becomes exposed so in this example it's the idea of the married woman and obviously this uh, quote-unquote affair that the person's actually had there and um, the, obviously the spending of expenses, etc. I mean, that's all tongue-in-cheek, but yeah, this could be also just as much if uh, if someone's father did have an or mother did have an affair you know that the uh, the actual sentiment that's actually held in here would be quite a quite a strong one um so images then or we've got this idea of this uh, batman lonely uh, sitting there punching his hand um or window so he's just sitting there in frustration obviously uh, because uh kid the kid here uh, robin imagines that batman actually misses him you've got uh, the image again of uh, the young boy looking up to his father which is again uh, demonstrated through those lines and we just got this image of someone holding someone else in awe you know really respecting someone maybe follow them around and you know maybe this is the way it is with the elder brothers and younger brothers and younger elder brothers uh, sorry, and same with sisters as well. Um, then we've got the idea here of a young person fashionably dressed. So obviously this is kind of like change, and this is like an independence. This is actually showing like how they've actually gone from uh, this uh, typical thing that was in the TV show to uh, sort of a pair of jeans and a crew neck jumper, so something a lot more casual, calm, maybe fitting what they actually wanted to wear. And, and obviously they're growing up into their own person. And it's obviously very important that afterwards it says I'm taller, harder, stronger, older. And obviously that's straight after the change. They said I um, changed the way. I dress to change the way I am uh, it's almost like a reinvention of oneself so we've got uh, in language then we've got alliteration uh, straight up at the top here Batman big shot so we've got these um, um, the sarcastic Batman this is obviously the idea of this superhero and then this sarcastic straight away big shot which is also uh, two syllables so you've got Batman big shot so it has a real striking um, uh, sarcastic tone uh, almost like it's like uh, he, he says people think he's a superhero but he's actually just a uh He's just pretending like he's just a big shot or a big time Charlie in this case. Um, we've got the language use, uh, the excessive use of adjectives. There's lots and lots and lots of descriptions about how he actually is and how their actually relationship was, etc., 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 etc. And as we down at the end here, where he's actually got the uh, description, all of this actually is just really, really well detailed to actually give us an idea of how 
detailed he hopes Batman's fall is, you know, how well he envisages Batman's life without him. He obviously really doesn't want him to be uh, having a good time in that one. Uh, we've also got the repetition of Batman constantly. So we know that obviously this has been spoken to someone or she's been referring to someone and it just keeps, he's like he's getting it off his chest. It just keeps kind of just shouting at him basically. Um, and maybe just keep, maybe in, on some level as well, it's the idea of uh, his own frustration. You know, again, that Batman is always associated with superheroes, someone he looked up to. So he just keeps repeating it to uh, to actually explode the myth. Almost maybe each time he says it, it's a little more sarcastic to himself. And uh, then we've got the um, da, 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 the effect. So what does it make us think about? Well, it makes us think about our childhood makes us think about who we looked up to makes us think about the kind of role models that we have uh also makes us think about what we want to aspire to be like and you kind of what secrets do people have and do we want to have those secrets that people can actually pick apart on us also makes us think about the relationships between people obviously and uh obviously when uh, when did uh, certain people in our lives become uh, a real disappointment to us because obviously that happens to everyone that maybe a friend really lets you down or maybe a parent really lets you down or, or maybe something really just doesn't go the way you expected it with someone or someone shows a side you you weren't expecting so that's all the things that this poem could actually uh, tell us about and then obviously how you deal with it afterwards um, so we move on to the last of the key Armitage poems Hitcher uh, it's a very popular poem um, right then the first structure point you've got variation in, stru in sentence lengths to show the character's confusion obviously and obviously the shaped stanzas now this is really interesting because each of the five stanzas if I just scroll through them quickly like that, they actually have the same shape they kind of spike like that now because they're actually uh, they're actually all five of them the same it shows that it's been written in a way to show that this person does have some thread of sense you know, it does have some um, method to their madness, as it were. But the fact that it keeps spiking each one, I mean, if you turn this 90 degrees um, to the left and you just looked at it, it would kind of go up and down like that. So obviously that's probably um, a reflection of their emotions, kind of peaking and then retracting, then peaking, then retracting. Because this person's obviously living perhaps in modern life and he just doesn't like it, maybe hates his job, etc. So that's actually really, really clear from the structure there. And obviously you've got the... Um, Enjoyment, which goes from um, line to line, and obviously across here it goes from uh, from uh, uh, stanza to stanza. So that just kind of shows that how far this person go and make connections. So in his head, when he actually meets this hitcher, there's probably many, many things that annoyed him um, beyond the actual things that he's actually just mentioned to us, which is his his free free lifestyle, etc. Um, uh, there's colloquial language uh, throughout uh, the sending of the poem, obviously, like uh, I let him have it, etc., etc., and that's just a kind of a breakdown of uh, showing that he's um, obviously within his own state of mind and actually shows us some kind of confessional piece. We're not sure who it's to, maybe it's to a, a police officer, etc., because he starts off by trying to exonerate himself a little. I'd been tired, so the fact that he actually uses the uh, the uh, the the idea of I, 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 I through the rest of the poem obviously makes it sound like it could be some kind of police report, etc. And you can mention things like that in the exam just as an option. It could be, it could be, and they're always going to get you, uh, hopefully, get you some marks for, for further insight. Um, so the first meaning that it gives us is about violence and perhaps death in the world. Obviously, we get that from the um, ba -ba -ba -ba, uh, hit him six times in the face with a crook look, which is basically steering wheel locks, a really heavy metal object, just, just smashes in the face uh, while driving. And also we've got the idea of um, how maybe a psychopathic, well, a stereotype of how a psychopathic person would actually act, could actually do something like that, then uh, not be bothered about it at all. But um, at the same time, the other kind of range of people that could do that are soldiers. You know, I mean, soldiers are actually taught to, to perform violent acts, uh, etc without having to um lose their concentration etc so maybe this is uh maybe this is actually a poem about a guy who just can't deal with his um civilian job uh coming back from certain things obviously we have nothing from that uh, in the poem but obviously it's a, it's a tangent you could take that might be of interest but remember if you do ever put anything on like that always put it could be it could be just just show that you've thought about it that way um so we've also got the bad relationships that this person obviously has with society and we can see that obviously he uh he uh has obviously got a bad relationship with his boss here because he's nearly fired and obviously the uh the fact that he leaves someone to bounce off the curb and disappear down the verge and not really care about it, then obviously that shows he's not really um, integrated with society, as it were. And obviously we're looking at a meaning of the unsatisfied with life. Something's not right in this person's life to actually make him want to do that. And is it the pressures of society? Is it that he's just that he hates his job? Or is it just that he was a little tired, as he says here, and, and that's uh, excuse enough to do what he did for him? So the images we have here of, uh, well, first of all, the hitcher. Um, obviously the title is about the person who's actually picked up. Up and um, he uh, says 
you know, he's, we've got this idea of blowing in the wind and actually the, uh, running the fingers through the hair. They're very free, free, free kind of images. So this person there is just kind of the exact opposite of the person in the car who's actually committing the violence. He's just relaxed and just flying about. We've also got the image of uh, the person dropping to the car and just bouncing. So the word bouncing there really is quite, I mean, he's just watching. It's almost like it's funny. Like, hey, look at that bounce. Um, and obviously it's a person bouncing on the curb. It's not really something that we you should take lightly. So the image there is actually quite a strong one. Um, because um, something probably most of us have never seen, unless obviously you, you use YouTube for things other than watching tutorial videos and watch things like that. Um, you've also also got the image of the violence, um, and then um, once in the one th with the head, uh, one with the head. Obviously, there's the headbutt there, and then he still just uh, finds time to actually hit him six times. It's a strong image of violence again. With the language, then we've got the personification of the answer phone at the uh, at the beginning. We've got the uh, answer phone, which is actually screaming at the person. Uh, obviously, that's another voice as well so it's a bit of a stretch but the answer phone is is given the uh, personification there and maybe it's the shrill noise or the beat that the answer phone's making just before this uh, message actually comes through is actually quite important you've got the wordplay on stitch down the end um, here obviously stitch that means basically forget that in colloquial terms but stitch it obviously you could actually be sarcastically saying stitch the wounds that you've got uh, in some way you, you could argue that to an extent and also just the language is very kind of calm I didn't even swerve I just dropped into the third and obviously he's keeping this rhyme going so again there's method in the madness even though he's actually doing these horrific things or this horrific thing as he actually goes through and we've got the uh, the alliteration the alliteration of we um, da, 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 we were the same age obviously that's not really full alliteration the students actually put this together for me but that's not full alliteration actually. I wouldn't actually go with that one but I think what is actually important is that um, the, the rhyme all the way through that we will actually look at is just kind of irregular but it's always there it's just kind of just punctuating his writing so it's almost as if you were listening to this person talk it would be a bit awkward and you didn't know when they were going to start and stop so I won't actually ignore that one there um, but so the effects then basically well it makes us think about our safety when we're traveling uh, and that's a kind of a base one it makes us think about how people are but it makes us think about the pressures that people are under in society you know what kind of thing are actually going in people's heads next time you see someone just kind of strolling along uh, driving along in a car uh, have they just done something like this or have they just come from somewhere are they thinking this kind of thing so it makes us also think about the feuds that people have and uh, you know maybe they can sort it out instead of obviously this person just didn't confront their boss and talk to them about the problem they were having they've obviously just tried to run away and think that that was the best way of dealing it taking another day off sick and also it makes us think about how lives are lost in violent ways etc um, over small small things when it's unexpected um, any of those things are things you can write about and obviously there's there's tons of other stuff to pick out but uh, hopefully this will give you just a head start into some insight